So now the time is for the next part of this puzzle. Uh, this thing should be mounted. Ah! So it should be mounted here. Um, not like this. Okay, a bit of cotton. Let's do that. I'm starting from the 12 or 14 actually millimeters hole in the middle. Uh, still using my wrench to move down the milling head. But it's how it's working for now. So now I'm finishing the bottom side, the holes there. So now one more finishing part with the inner hole. The bottom side is okay, it's finished completely, uh, I will not do nothing more here from this side. Uh, now I need to turn, turn around uh, my aluminum piece and start working with the upper side. And around so it should be rounded and that will be it for this part after that I will mount it to the milling machine and as well I will show you how good is this screw working I'm already very satisfied how it's working but I would like to show you this as well so it's what I have at the moment. Uh, inner side is completely finished. What's left, it's only the make it rounded. I really like how this finishing looks. So just a few steps and I will have a handle for the milling machine. So oh, this side is done, and how it looks. Only holes are left. Holes and red here, and three holes over there. Now I think what I want to do uh, is to cut here with angle. So it's how I could try to do that. And let's take a look how it will work. And will it work? Or I will completely destroy the part. So it's done. Surface is pretty clean. I like how it's looking. Just a few steps left. Uh, now a few holes. So it's a result at the end. Now I have all the pieces together and could assemble it. 
So let's assemble and take a look how it looks like. Okay, so uh, this one is original from Proxon, this one as well, so limp and this part of the handle. Uh, these two pieces assemble them together and it will be actually the handle. Um, this dimension exactly like originally on the Proxon, and this one a bit bigger. I think bigger one will be more useful and more easy to use. So to mount them together I will use just three screws. I will not take thread lock for now. It's probably later when I see that everything is working as I expect. I will apply thread lock to all of this Actually, original Proxon handles uh, on the machine, on this one small, and on the Kata 70 table is pretty small. Uh, and um, it's not very comfortable to use them at all. This one that I have on the bigger cross table, they are much more easy to use. So this one I was made almost the same size as I have on the bigger cross table. So it's what I have here. Uh, of course the screws looks not perfect and if I will mount them from the bottom side uh, it will be much more beautiful uh, but I was decided to make it more easy and it was more easy for me and more configurable in this version probably I will make it again at some point uh, so in this version it will look exactly like this uh, usually you never go inside the limb and you're touching only the handle on the on this one and and it's not a problem usually so rotational handle And limb. For limb is the spring. This one. So when I'm putting it on the handle, it looks like this. It could be rotated and change the position of the limb itself. So it's what I have at the end. Of course a lot of work, of course you could buy similar piece in China on AliExpress, uh, but probably anyway it will not fit into your dimension, it will be, it will have some other different problems, so I decided to make it by my own. Exactly what I want. It's pretty the same size as this one, only this handle is a bit smaller. Uh, and this nut is actually fixing it, so I have it right here and just a control nut. Uh, now mount into the machine. So I'm just screwing it to the machine. And I'll screw the nut, but before I will do it, I will check the position of uh, the lead screw and is it tight enough here in the bearings. So we'll do it now. Now time for tests. So, 
here I have zero. Here I have limp on zero as well. Let's move down for one tenth. And almost one tenth here. Let's return back. To zero. And it's on zero here. Okay, let's move down for one millimeter. Uh, almost one millimeter. I'm actually didn't trust to this Chinese indicator that I have, so I hope that even this screw more persistent than this indicator. Let's move back for one tenth. And what we have, we have exactly nine tenths. Let's move forward again. Again the same. So, what I could say, it really makes sense to change this lead screw. Now it's working much more reliable than at the beginning and originally on the Proxon machine. Uh, at first, because of the nut that used by the Proxon initially, uh, it's made of some of plastic or something like that. So this one, the original screw. Uh, at the beginning, the thread on the screw is just a regular thread. Um, and also this nut, it completely couldn't be persistent and uh, how it's connected to the head of the milling machine. Even if you put in the bearings here, it's uh, um, you have one tenth, really one tenth uh, of millimeter uh, difference between uh, or one tenth of play on this screw. And now I have one thousand of play by this Chinese indicator, but as I mentioned, I really doesn't trust this. Um, I have a bit bigger, uh, a bit more persistent one uh, that I'm regularly using, so I will try to mount this one now. And let's check one tenth and how persistent it is with this indicator. One more time with this indicator and one to three block. So zero here, zero here, more than one tenth. Have almost one tenth on the indicator. Moving back to zero and zero on the indicator. Let's do it again. One tenth. Here and here. Let's move to two tenths. Almost two. And two here. So what I could say, it's quite persistent and I'm very satisfied how it's working. Uh, I could move now my milling head directly to the table so there is enough of space and enough of moment for the lid screw. Um, it's much more persistent, um, so it's quite cheap update that everyone could do. And maybe this idea will work for someone else, not only for me. Um, what I will need to do next, I will need to protect somehow 
the rails and uh, lid screw. Um, I'm already have several of the ideas, so in one of my next video you will see uh, one of them. So how I will protect this part, this side, and also how I will protect the rails for the table, for the cross table. So it's a wrap for this video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye bye.